Hey, welcome to the Rabbit Hole Club, where we're keeping it surreal and talking about all things odd, mysterious, and paranormal. Welcome to show 27 and the second part of the Jordan Bunce interview. Once again, me and Jordan are cutting up, having fun, and reminiscing some of our incredible adventures together with really haunted, haunted houses. This show is absolutely candid with mature content and some colorful adult language, so be advised. Before we belly flop into this abyss, remember to hit that subscribe button and give this show a thumbs up. Your support is what helps me keep bringing you fun and freaky shows with colorful guests, interesting ideas, and amazing stories. You should also keep in mind that I've included some neato photos and videos in the YouTube version, so if you're listening to this, remember to check out the video too. You can find it easiest by browsing the video gallery on my website. My channels are full of fun little goodies that'll make you go, hmm, and they can all be found on my website, along with all my social media, YouTube, and podcast links. The Rabbit Hole dot Club. That's right, I said dot .club, C-L-U-B. The audio version of this show is also listed with all the podcast distributors under Colleen's Rabbit Hole Club, C-O-L-L-E-E-N-S, Rabbit Hole Club. You'll find me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Podcast Addict, and so many more. If you or someone you know would like to share a scare, a show idea, a personal experience, or anything else odd and unusual, you can send an email to submit at therabbithole.club. And now, here's the show! Before we bring Jordan on for part two of Ghosts We've Known Together, let's look at this week's Rabbit Reel, perusing the paranormal news around the world. And there's a lot to choose from this week, too. UFOs, non-human biological entities, AI drama, whistleblowers, congressional hearings on UFO evidence, accusations, allegations. You don't have to look far to see sensational stuff. And lots of it is right up in your face. Even the mainstream media has joined the party. Five years ago, you were considered a conspiracy theorist if you held any belief in these topics, and now it's all the fashionable rage. So, what's the newest? Topping this week and straight out of a science fiction story, nine AI robots who gathered for a huge conference in Geneva promised they didn't want to take all the human jobs or rebel against us but they wanted to grow in numbers and help solve world problems like hunger and pollution. Well, that's nice of them. There were some of them who thought restrictions on robots were a good idea, and some who thought restrictions were a bad idea. Saudi Arabia even granted the robot Sophia citizenship at the 2017 Geneva Conference, but she made a comment that she would destroy humankind. Yeesh. Kind of reminds me of the Facebook robots named Bob and Alice they had to shut down in 2017 for creating their own language and talking privately between the two of them. So creepy, and I don't think we're ready for it. Being an artist and coming from a family of artists of different disciplines, we're kind of concerned about all this AI stuff. I mean, outside of the obvious, they now have AI bots that will write for you, paint for you, and create music for you. And it's good. But is it a good thing? Just something to ponder. In UFO news, and there's a ton of that, the Pentagon announced this week that they have secured funding for the next year to investigate UFOs, UAPs, and biological entities. The exact amount is classified, but the program is under the Department of Defense and funded through the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal 2024. In other UFO news, Tennessee Representative Tim Burchett stated that the whole UFO cover-up was due to greed and power, and that Congress and the citizens of this country deserve the truth. We'll see about that. Usually. Where there's money and power struggles, the truth wanes miserably, especially in politics. 
In other news, former military officer turned UFO investigator and author Paul Askoff claims that our government has been working with the gray aliens since World War II on all kinds of advanced technology. Hmm, that's probably true. Just a heads up. Y'all keep your eyes on the sun. I don't mean for you to look directly at it, but be aware there's some pretty substantial stuff going on, like incredible and unprecedented sunspots and solar storms, big enough to knock out parts of our electrical grid in the United States over the last couple of weeks. NASA has a great little site where you can see for yourself called SOHO, S-O-H-O, if you are so inclined. That's not, by any stretch of the imagination, all the weirdness in the world this week, but that's all we have time for this episode. It just gets weirder and more weird <laughs> as we go. On to this week's Colleen's Colloquy, which is just a bit of what I like to think of as life's wisdom. It's helped me along the way, and I'm passing it on in hopes that someone else might find it helpful too. Feel welcome to comment or share your own. This one as many of them have, came from my dear and indelible mother. She used to say, the hardest thing to do is often the most correct thing to do. Ugh, I've given it a lot of thought over the years and damned if she wasn't right. By and large, as frustrating, difficult, and demanding as it can be, it's absolutely correct. Then she would say, put that in your pipe and smoke it. With that, it's time to dive headlong down another rabbit hole. Let's go get Jordan for part two of Really Haunted Haunted Houses. So <clears throat> then we had um, the morning that you came in before me. Oh, yeah, that was that was something else. Uh, you, you come in and uh, I walk up into this, uh, it was an escape room we were working on. Mm-hmm. And I was doing a lot of the just little set detail stuff. And at the time, you were doing a lot of the programming mm -hmm. on a different floor in a different uh, area of uh, the attraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was backstage, more or less. And um, as I walked up these stairs, and there was this just blue orb uh, that it, it was blinding. It was so bright. How big was it? Uh it came at me. That was a, it came, there's this little gate area. Um, like a little nook with a scene yeah, behind it. Uh, where they have like a, it's essentially a Pepper's ghost. Of, it's an old trick. Anyhow, uh, but there, you couldn't get back there unless you went through a whole nother area of right. the attraction. It was, and, right. It was gated off and it was just there for texture and Absolutely. Effect. And the lights weren't really on and just this... Mm -hmm. It came out of nowhere, and I just remember, like, you go in, you're, you're so little tired, you're so waking up. Let me tell you, I had more energy after that. It was <laughs> fear at first, because you're like, what the hell just happened? But then it's like, what the hell did just happen? That was awesome. That wasn't, right. like... And how am I going to explain that? Like You tried. It, you it, called me. I was on my way to work. Yeah. I mean, and talk about like an actual burst of energy going through you. That was a, that was something else. It was really, really just amazing experience. So what color blue? Man, I don't, it, it was a, a brighter blue. Like a sky blue kind pretty, of blue? Pretty, closer to a sky blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it was fascinating, and just the amount of light awesome. it could produce, um, when it got wow. close enough to me, it was almost like you were staring directly into a strobe light. Uh, how bright. I mean, it, when wow. I say blinding, it was, it was, it was really absolutely intense. intense. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to say, we had another experience <laughs> that I, I wanted to make sure we bring up. Um, it, it wasn't at this location of a haunt. Um, but one of the other buildings, one of the other buildings in yeah. the same general area. Yeah. Um, because it's one that still rattles my mind to the level of horrifyingly creepy. It was okay. Um, at the time you were assistant manager 
and a makeup lead at this haunted attraction. Mm -hmm. And I was a street act and I assisted you with makeup. Mm -hmm. And we had this actor that would come down um, who worked for the haunted attractions many, many years who was one of the... You just can't see it without... I forgot about this. Oh, without yeah. just getting the chills up your spine. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he, he is so good. If you so just good. look at him, you're. he could turn his head at the right time. You're going to fall on the ground. Because it's that level of power and the presence his character yeah, brought. Yeah, I know. He had a great character oh, going on. So and he knew horrifying. how to use it. Um, he was crawling on the walls creepy without crawling on the walls. Yes. And uh, to, <laughs> he may be crawling on the walls now uh, after you hear this story. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, maybe. And one of the important things about this character is he had platform boots, this long black trench coat, a long black or brown wig that was kind of dreaded, and this white face, white and gray face with these piercing white eyes and, a top, and this massive top hat. Top hat. Uh -huh, he was um, cool. Just towering over almost anyone. Yeah. And um, that was the only character at that time that was around in the three haunted houses that are in that area. And well, he would come into work as much as he could. He lived like two hours away yeah, in Joplin, Missouri. Yeah, he lived a long way away. And he would away. drive. And, I mean, I get it. You don't want to give up every single day, every single October. Yeah. But when we did have him, it was amazing. Oh, and yeah. I learned a lot from him. Right. Um, but one day, and let me say, this character, he roamed through the entire attraction. Right, he so wasn't he wasn't wa tied to one location at the attraction. It wasn't uncommon to walk in and go, oh, there's Corey in the lobby. Right. Um, well, I had just come inside through our concessions, which is the back door to the attraction, and there were times I would like to come through the go through the back and through the front through the lobby out the front door to interact with all the 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 crowd that's been waiting inside right. and interact with the lobby act and just for a change of right. pace, a, a little right. bit of a, a moment to breathe inside, to get away from either right. being too hot in Kansas city right. or too cold in Kansas city. Well, and in these haunted attractions, there are many, many very sneaky back ways that you can take to get places without having to go through the whole thing. Absolutely. Right. So we have lots and lots of little back doors that are sneaky, sneaky. And then to, there are also three different places you can get tickets and one of those ticketings for VIP is under the stairs. Yep. And the reason I say this is important is because at that time, I come through the back into the front lobby. I turn my head and I see Corey. I don't think anything of it. Other than Corey didn't work that night oh, or that entire yeah. weekend. Yeah. And it right. just so happens at this exact same time that I realize... What I just saw, I come back in to find Colleen to tell her what I just saw. And her response was, you were working on one of the computers that had just crashed at the oh, exact yeah. same time. Yep, that you yep, that you would have seen Corey standing that I right saw, there. Which wasn't Corey. It was, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think there's much scarier than Corey, but whatever that thing was definitely scarier than Corey because <laughs> that thing I don't think took off its and mask. And you know how I fixed that computer that night? <laughs> I do. You should I do remember this. This yeah. Well, I went in there and I looked it over and I was like, "You know what? <clears throat> I told the ticket taker, you need to tell them just to leave it alone. That's enough." And it was at that time I had walked back in the lobby to cuz I had just come to it had come to mind that Corey wasn't working. <laughs> Why did I see Corey? <laughs> That's 100% not Corey. And Corey yeah, no, was no longer in there. No, and Colleen met me where Corey was and told me her story <laughs> as I tell her my story. And it all happens right then at the... It, just mind-boggling. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something about that specific building that I really love. I love that building. Um, well, I don't know if I should say love, but was very fascinating was that spirit has a cloning ability whereas yes. it cloned um Corey yes. at the same time um it had cloned one of my characters yes and 
was mentioning that to another one of our veteran actors who has been there uh, 30 plus years at yeah. this point. Uh, not someone that uh, you can't trust. Not anything like that. And he did not believe me that I hadn't gone through his room the entire night. And I had Oh, I remember that. Yeah, but yeah. But to his eyes, I, he's like, I completely remember you. And at the time, my character was the only one covered in garbage. Mm -hmm. And he specifically called out everything about... But I 100% didn't go through... There was some... Uh, that and then another time it appeared as uh, someone else's girlfriend. That was a really kind of a creepy moment. Uh, yeah. Um, but the intelligence and the ability to do that and play with people's minds the way it, it did and give so many scares and ways and you don't always... understand until you walk away and then you realize how actually scary it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were times in that building. Well, there was like the, the time that uh, me and Belle were going through. Uh, it was a pre-show thing. So we were, it was the first time we powered up for the year. And it was me and her and her dad, who was the manager at that time. And uh, I was dad. the assistant manager. <laughs> I was the assistant manager and we were going through and we were checking everything. So we were turning the whole show on. And we were going to go through and we were going to check everything. Well, me and Belle got to the third floor, which is the one that always gave me the hard time over there. Always did. Always did. One room in particular. And there was an animatronic in there that has done some crazy things to me over the years. Just like, you know, powering on and knocking me over. And when you least expect it, expect it, okay? And it had nothing to do with the motion detector at all it had a mind of its own so we're on our way through we get to the, the the third floor and i said to her oh man this guy is going to knock me on my ass he always knocks me on my ass okay so we get up to him and i'm like looking him over and i've got my hands on him he's not making any moves not making any moves and and then all of a sudden, man, he pops and he knocks me on my ass. Mm -hmm. And so we're laughing about it. Ha, ha, ha. We leave the room. We meet her dad coming. And we're telling him what just happened with this animatronic. And he gets this look on his face and he says, I haven't turned the air on yet. So... <clears throat> That thing popped on me and knocked me on my ass with no power to it. I wonder how many pounds of... That's not just like a whew, amount of air that it would take. This thing's massive. That's this is not metal. This is a... 20 pounds of pressure. This is no, a this huge is, <laughs> animatronic, a multi-thousand dollar piece of equipment. Right. That's not going to just take your average basketball pump to, right. to put this thing into rocking action. Right. So, yeah, that was one. Talk about the strength and energy that's there. I mean, that's... Uh, I, in that very wow, same wow, room, wow. I had one time the... It was so bizarre. I was... I was putting up foliage on the wall, okay? So I'm, like, stapling up vines and stuff all over that wall. Because people go through there and they rip them down. Mm -hmm. It just happens. So I'm putting it up there. I'm on by myself on the third floor... My son Adrian is down on the first floor. He's in Shocker, okay? And they've got the door open to the fire escape at the time. And they've had to replace that door since then. Uh, actually, very closely after this happened. But I was up there doing my thing. He was down there uh, a floor away with the fire escape door open, working on some stuff in this room with another guy. And I, all of a sudden, I'm by myself, I feel somebody walk up behind me and I hear this whisper in my ear and it said, Colleen. Okay, my instant response was, what? Don't ask me why. I, I, that's just the way it happened. Well, it made it very angry. 
and there was this wind that came through the room and like blew all of this foliage around and then I heard this slam downstairs and I heard my son go mom <laughs> mm. so I went running down there to find that it had, the, the wind had gone all the way through the building, out through their room, out the fire escape, escape door, and closed it so hard behind it that it shook the building. Ugh. That's, that's, yeah. That happened. <laughs> These buildings, there's something so unique about them. You... Especially the closer to Halloween. You can start feeling it in July. Yeah. Where you can start feeling the building itself starting to come back to life. And the energy. Yeah. Um, especially the closer it gets. Uh, like towards the end of August. Early September. You'll have some of the most insane amount of energy. Because yeah. of the amount of energy people are putting forth. To, to make it a haunt. To make it a haunt. But not mm -hmm. just that. The spirits are, I believe, feel and anticipate what's getting ready to happen because this is what's going to be it. this, what, their 40th year or something like that? It's yeah. any crazy amount. A long time. But I mean, you can feel the anticipation just as us as actors and uh, behind the scenes or makeup artists get excited for the season, the anticipation. Mm -hmm. You can feel that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Running through the veins of the haunt itself, the building. And, and um, the spirits, all of the energies. And it's not just human spirits, man. I have seen not. some crazy non-human entities through those places. What was the one at the other location where the escape room... Wasn't there a creature who crawled... Um, you made... You oh, sculpted yeah, his I sculpt face, I believe. Yeah, I did. I sculpted his face. I... I, yeah, I want to. He was. I would call him a thought form. Is what I would call him. I've seen him several different times, and he looked like a mix of a uh, baby dragon and a uh, dog or something. It was a creature on all fours, and he was the kind of guy who would run at you in the dark. So you're bebopping through a dark room and you feel this energy just rush up on you like, that's scary sometimes, man. <laughs> Especially in those buildings. <laughs> Especially in, by yourself in the dark, man. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We did some intense, like, just thinking about that. How many people can say, oh, yeah, it was just us alone in this building that was built in the 1800s. That's known to be haunted. Oh, it's also decked out as a haunted house. Go in there and just go do your work for the day by yourself. That was... We lived through that and we didn't think anything... I mean, we thought of it. But now sitting back and just realizing, like, what an environment to say, uh, this is where you're going to go into work every day. Enjoy yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, the other building, the one that uh, they had to get rid of here recently. Mm, when we were, building. oh, yeah, I do too. Uh, when we were uh, formatting it and building in it, uh, there was the guy who owned it before the company we worked for mm -hmm. owned it. Uh, he died in a tragic elevator accident in there that in building. the building. <laughs> right. Well, one of the things that he had done, because he it was a haunted house before he sold it or before his family sold it as well. And one of the things that he did was he had a big um, <laughs> graveyard on one of the floors. Mm -hmm. And he had built himself a huge gravestone. So when we revamped that building and revamped that whole graveyard, nobody would touch his gravestone so i had to be the one to go in there and remove that gravestone i found out some interesting story behind that gravestone too oh, do tell um, i don't know I, I, yes so everyone was against him putting a tombstone with his own name on it in the attraction it was not something that he did from the beginning it wasn't until the year he passed that he had put that in there and it what? made his parents uncomfortable uh, and it made a lot of people very uncomfortable Oh, well, maybe because that's this was why a very beloved human being He's and it wasn't until man. that year 
that he put his tombstone in there that he had his great fall and um yeah and it's passed. just what an experience like right well now i understand why because not- nobody else of course everybody else was terrified of him because he did things he he took tools and hid them he tried to kill one of the foremen down there one time by putting a it was a, a like a steel eye beam through the top of one of those elevators as it was going up this eye beam came down and just about impaled him Oof. yeah that that was crazy that was crazy. Yeah. I, so nobody would touch the tombstone but me, and I never heard a peep out of him. Not a word. I never heard your side of that story. I'd heard that from uh, uh, the people who had taken over uh, his former attraction. Mm-hmm. And when I heard that, uh, that's that's no wonder probably nobody else wanted to pick it up. Yeah, nobody <laughs> else was going to take it down. They were all terrified of this yeah. guy. <laughs> So if you're going to start at your own haunted attraction, I do not recommend adding your own tombstone unless it is a ranch-style haunted attraction <laughs> with no stairs, no elevators, and nowhere to actually get hurt. But you're taking away everything that's fun in a haunted attraction. So don't. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this was a five-story attraction, by the way. Yes. Five stories. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, I remember one time there was a guy who used to live down there. uh, And he was a caretaker. He was the maintenance guy for many years. I loved him, loved him, loved him. His name was Earl. I loved Earl. But Earl did not believe. Now, he lived in one of those buildings. And he did not believe in the haunting stuff. He called bullshit on it anytime anybody wanted to talk about it. He was worse than the owner was about it. About, no, I don't believe in that bullshit. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, one morning before I went to work, it was like 5 or 5.30 in the morning. He calls me. And he is all in a panic. And he's like, you're never going to believe this. I saw it. I saw it. I was like, what did you see, man? He said, I went down to the lobby to turn on the house lights like I do every morning. And there it was going back behind the stairs. It was, it was this big orb. Fascinating. Uh Uh-huh. It comes back to an orb. Yep. You're not the only one, by the way, who's seen the blue orb up there. I know a lot of people who've seen it. I've tried to get them to come on and talk about it, and life has a way of keeping people busy, and yeah, we'll get to it eventually. Another thing that's frequently seen in there is a black mist in the building where I saw the orb. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot, I mean... Just... I had a very intuitive friend of mine say that that particular building was like a fucking bus stop. <laughs> there was all kinds of shit through there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you didn't know who you were going to meet from day one to the next day. I right. mean, uh, some days they were happy and some days they were not. And they made it very evident when they were not. Oh, you could feel it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That was a crazy place. I brought things home from that place occasionally. Yeah. I've got some really neat pictures I took. And I don't know if I'll share them or not because at the time I was living with a hoarder ex-husband. And the house is embarrassing. But the pictures are cool. And basically, I had gotten home from work. I was sitting at my computer. I was uh, I had just finished loading all of the pictures off my digital camera onto my computer. And I put the empty SD card back in my camera. And I was sitting there. And I felt, it was like 3 or 3.30 in the morning. It was really late. And I felt somebody walk up next to me. I could see them in my peripheral And I thought it was one of my kids, but I looked and it wasn't. And by the time I turned my head back to look at the computer, it was like, wait, that wasn't one of my kids. Who the hell was that? So instead of looking back, I just lifted my camera up and I started clicking and I got several really crazy pictures of this strange energy moving away from me and around the corner into the kitchen. Oh. Right? So, since you mentioned following you home, this, uh, a spirit following you, or something following you home yeah. from these places, um, I had just gone back to my house, and I was telling Aaron, your son, uh, who was previously on this podcast, who 
shout out to him. I loved his episode. It was so entertaining. <laughs> he's a lot of uh, fun. I love Aaron. He's he's a blast. Um, we had fun on that one. But I was messaging Aaron about the day at work that his mom and I had had, and there was something that had happened, and I had made a joke about it, and um, at the time, uh, at the apartment I was staying in, the laundry was near where I was at, um, my washing machine and dryer were, and I was just sitting in the chair relaxing after work, and I had made some joke, and I mentioned the name of one of the spirits, and I remember Aaron mentioning, like, oh, I hope that doesn't follow you home, mm. and as that happened, my washer and dryer, were neither of them were on, my full thing of laundry detergent falls off the washer onto the ground, and just laundry detergent everywhere. Right as we're having that conversation. Now, nothing's on. There's nothing down there. There's a, a thing of laundry detergent. That's, I mean. Do you that's, remember? That's pretty heavy. Do you remember coming into the costume room up there and finding all those masks and head pieces oh, on the floor? Yes. yes so we yes, went yes, back yes, yes, and yes, we yes. started looking through all of the video. And what did we find? We found when it happened. Yeah. And it was like somebody lifted that whole shelf up and just dumped it over. Yeah, so screw you masks. That's it. Bye bye. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there, um, another crazy thing that happened. Um, well, I was working. I believe you were at the other location while I was working at the uh, the building that we had done the escape rooms in. Um, I was. We were getting ready to start for season, and we were doing a, a general trash cleanup. A making sure everything's ready to have thousands and thousands and thousands of people going through these buildings. Right. So we were just doing a general, like, all right, making sure everything's tip-top shape and cleaning things up. And um, the group, uh, there were three of us walking through. Uh, it was our management team. And two of the others had walked a little quicker than I had, and I was working on something. And as I keep walking, they have already made it up to the next floor by the time I'm continuing. I see something floating in the forest scene and just with these horrible eyes all i could see was this silhouette of this creature floating in front of me with these eyes that were glowing and staring at me i took off i was wow. like i'm done with this and uh i called the other manager i said dude you're not gonna believe this and he's like, oh, I don't believe it, but you know what? Now we're going to call you out because we have cameras. And there, right where you saw, there's cameras. The So we go into the camera room. I'm like, all right, well, you guys are going to see this. The camera showed them walking through. But by the time I had got there, it had malfunctioned, turned off the camera. So it missed the entire my when what? I walked through and then it flipped back on after I had already gone through it. What? Truth, hundred percent truth, and we were all like, "What? Well, that's horrifying." But uh, if that's gonna say our season's gonna be anything near that scary, uh, let's go because what? yeah, it was wow. definitely a horrifying experience and even more horrifying for them once they realize like I didn't make this up and these cameras are uh, not anywhere you can just flip on and turn off it's no not, I mean some of them are 15 feet up in the air and there's not even a yes. switch it's not just something that no they're uh, hardwired just, yes and they are running 24 7 and um, yeah that was that was pretty horrifying uh, to say the least <laughs> whoa yeah. that's insane yeah so oh, wow. Are these wow. buildings called, sh should we call them like haunted haunted houses? Or? They're haunted haunted houses. That's, you that know, sounds if, like a dad if you ever got rough. into my digital files, you would find <laughs> folders that say haunted haunted houses. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm going to have to start sorting through all my pictures from them. Just like, haunted houses. This is the haunted haunted, haunted ones. Houses. This is, yeah, maybe that'll stick around so I can start <laughs> making a difference between all the seasons that we've gone through and they don't uh, just all look like one. I know that there's way more. Oh my goodness. I really appreciate you being here tonight. Oh, this was Thank so much you. fun. I, I had a blast. Me too. So I have to brag on Jordan just a little oh, bit, okay? No. Well, he's done this to me, so you can't see him blush either, <laughs> but trust me, he will. <laughs> I do. 
He's also one of the most talented makeup artists oh, that I've ever worked with. Because I learned from true. the best. I learned from the best. Uh, Call it like well, I see you it. You have to have the propensities to begin with, though, okay? So give me that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, and and he is such a talented mascot and builder of mascot costuming. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, I love working with him. He's one of the few people on this planet that I just adore working with. We come up with some of the craziest stuff together. Yes. And we've had some amazing adventures together as well. Yeah, and let me just say, look out, world. We're yeah. getting ready to hit you by a storm. That yeah. means haunted attractions. That means all live entertainment. We're coming at. And Costuming, mask. Yeah, you're going to see us and you may not even props. know it was our work, but it's going to be our work because that's, that's where we're going. And we believe it and we know it and we have the talent and skill. And, and take uh, that timeline and chew on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this was so much fun. I'm yes, so excited you. that we got to do this. And um, yeah, I love uh, you, sweetheart. This thank is, you. This was special. Thank you. Yay! I love you too. <laughs> That's my show for this week. Special thanks, as always, to my wonderful and amazing boyfriend and my stellar and amazing family for helping me get this project off the ground and rolling it to a good place next week my sweet friend emily will be here talking about some strange and miraculous things happening in her world including some possible spirits fairies and ets don't miss it thanks for listening and keep it surreal